so this next section deals with how to solve any first order linear ODE. And so any first order linear ODE is written in the following way. dy dt plus some function strictly in t, which we'll call p in this case, times y is equal to g of t. So remember it's first order because my highest derivative is one here and it's linear because all, all of my coefficients in front of y and its derivatives are strictly functions of t. And you'll notice here it's equal to g of t, so this works for homogeneous or non-homogeneous cases. So the goal here is that we want to systematically solve this equation right here. We want to find just a general method on how do we solve any equation that looks like that. So the first thing that I think we should do is how about we multiply both sides of this equation by some function q of t that is only a function in t. So multiplying this q of t onto dy dt plus p of t y is equal to g of t, we're going to get the following. q of t dy dt plus q of t p of t y is equal to q of t g of t. Good. Now, you might be asking why the hell would I do that? Like that just seems like a lot more work that I didn't need to do and it just complicated my life. Um, let's take a look at this left hand side of the equation. So focusing in on this, this should scream product rule to you. You'll notice that if I take q times y and I take the derivative with respect to t on this, I will get q times dy dt plus q prime times y. Notice, q dy dt is exactly what I have right here. And then for this to work, all I need is that q prime must equal q times p. So let's note that. For this to work, dq dt must equal q of t times p of t. Great. And you'll notice that this is a separable equation. So keeping that in mind, we can now solve for q here. So if I move everything, if I put my q's with my q's and my uh, p of t with my dt, I'll get dq over q is equal to p of t dt. Now here I can actually integrate because this differential only is with respect to q. So this is going to be natural log absolute value of q. And then when I integrate this, I don't know what my p of t is, so I'll just leave that as follows. And then exponentiating both sides, I get that q of t is equal to e to the integral of p of t dt. Now, this is what is called my integrating factor. And so you may be wondering, oh, in this step right here, I forgot to add my plus c, right? Well, for integrating factors, the plus c is just going to result into having a scalar multiple of q of t. Um, and that doesn't really matter because that'll be canceled out anyway by the end of the equation. So for integrating factor only, it's okay to not have a plus c when you do this integral. So now that we have this, we can write the following. So remember from up above, the motivation was that d dt of y q would equal q of t times g of t. And we just solved for our q, so let's substitute that in. d dt times y e to the integral of p of t dt is equal to e to the integral p of t dt g of t. Now, again, this has um, 
a derivative with respect to t on the left hand side. So this is practically begging me to just integrate both sides, which I will. So integrating the left and the right in this class, derivative and an integral, they just go away. So y e to the integral of p of t dt is equal to the integral of this. And so again, I'm going to just assume that I've already taken this integral, but this will depend on your function and your equation. And so I'm going to have my plus c. You must do this immediately. This is pretty important. And so here you should be thinking, I need to add plus c. Now, moving on, the whole purpose of this was to solve for y, right? So now let's write y is equal to my integral of e to the integral of p of t dt g of t divided by e to the integral of p of t dt plus c over e to the integral of p of t dt. Now, now you see why we need to add that plus c after. Otherwise, if we added the plus c in here, and this right here, we would just have an arbitrary constant. And that doesn't work unless p of t um, comes out to be 0, right? Because then that's the only case in where we get an arbitrary constant on this right-hand side. So now another key point that I want to point out is that you can't just cancel out these two because of this integral right here. This integral is part, like this e to the integral p of t dt, otherwise known as q, is inside this integral. So you can't just cancel out uh, this guy on top and the bottom one. So keeping all that in mind, this is our final form of the general solution to a first order linear ODE. Now, this may not look too great at first glance, but we can go ahead and uh, see through an example how powerful this technique is. Oh, and I forgot a DT right here and right here. Great. So let's take a look at an example. dy dt minus 2y is equal to t squared e to the 2t. Now, I'll notice this minus 2 here, and this means that minus 2 is equal to p of t, which means that q of t is equal to e to the integral of minus 2 dt, which means that it's e to the minus 2t. Now, remember, a lot of students are going to want to write that my p of t is just plus 2, but the way that we define our first order linear equation up here is that this is a plus sign, right? It's not dy dt minus p of t times y, it's dy dt plus p of t times y. So be sure to carry that out as you're solving this equation. So now that we have our q of t, let's write this in the way that we can exploit how to get the final answer. d dt of e to the minus 2t times y is equal to t squared. And then since I multiplied both sides by e to minus 2t, this is going to be e to the 2t times my e to the minus 2t. And these two go away. Perfect. So now the equation at hand to solve is just this. So I want to integrate both sides with respect to t. And so these will go away. So e to the minus 2t times y will equal t cubed over 3, and then immediately put plus c. I'm going to put a star just because it's so important. Immediately add plus c. And then from here, in order to get y, you just divide by e to the minus 2t. So this is y of t is going to be equal to e to the 2t t cubed over 3 
plus c e to the 2t. And this is your final answer. And so you'll notice if I added the plus c at the very end, I wouldn't have this extra function right here of e to the 2t, which is really critical in these kind of problems. So be sure, again, I can't stress enough to add the plus c right after you do the integration on the right hand side. Great. So the next section is we're going to talk about modeling certain scenarios with uh, first order equations. And so you'll see that a lot of these scenarios can be modeled by a first order linear or a separable equation. And so just the two methods that you learned so far are going to be are going to prove very useful in uh, modeling. So thanks for watching.